Assalamu alaikum. Today, third lecture in troubleshooting of interaortic plume counter pulsation. We will speak about uh, plume pressure waveform interpretation, uh, the normal waveform and abnormality, and how to solve. We come for uh, console. Uh, what the parameter on the console? We will find ECG, and uh, here there is the heart rate. Reading the heart rate. This is the pressure on the console. Uh, for pressure on console, the, pac the patient here is on one to two uh, uh, assessment assist. So we have one beat assisted and the other beat not assisted. So if we look for the console here, we will find uh, a systolic pressure, two systolic pressure, one assisted and one not assisted, unassisted. Diastolic pressure, one assisted, one uh, not assisted. Mean arterial blood pressure. And here we will find augmented uh, diastolic pressure. If we come for uh, a helium, uh, a helium source or helium tank, we will find it's full, uh, just a little uh, part is empty. And if we find here, this is the inflation of the balloon and deflation, how it's inflated or deflated. Uh, and this is curve called balloon pressure waveform. And we will explain now, uh, now in this lecture. Here we will find that there is a pressure source, and as we mentioned before, if it's direct from the patient, or sometimes we can put in direct and take him from the monitor itself. The mode is O2, that's mean the inflation and deflation of the balloon is O2, uh, regulated by the balloon itself. And here there is a gas, slow gas alarm. If any problem in the inflation or deflation, the alarm is uh, will work. It's very important to know how to interpret it balloon pressure waveform. Uh, one is the zero baseline, and two is the, pre the balloon pressure baseline. When we inflate the balloon with the helium, so it will create uh, uh, phase number three, and when reaching up to the uh, uh, up to full inflation, it will be uh, uh, inflation upstroke. And five will be like uh, the plateau balloon plateau uh, balloon plateau pressure, or uh, we consider it seated chair. And the balloon plateau pressure is a function of the pressure inside uh, inside the, the helium of the balloon, and the pressure inside the aorta, which relates to elastic recoil of aortic wall. And six is rapid deflation, and seven is a deflation overshoot. Uh, and it about a, a 10 to 15 millimeter mercury and uh, eight returning to the baseline. For nine is the duration of the cycle, the duration at which is the, the balloon become inflated. And uh, also uh, um, for uh, the inflation shouldn't exceed 250 millimeter mercury. Uh, this is the... Uh, to divide the stages of the balloon inflation and deflation. For inflation, two and three and four stage, two, three, four, they are pushing of the helium from the pump. And when the helium reaching to the, uh, uh, to the catheter, it will be five and six, and nine representing the whole cycle of inflation. And back again into the pump is six, seven, and eight. Balloon pressure width, it's the duration in which the balloon is inflated. Balloon pressure waveform height is reflecting the pressure inside the aorta, and therefore the plateau pressure on the balloon pressure waveform should be within 25 millimeter mercury of the augmented uh, of the augmented diastolic pressure in on arterial pressure waveform. Uh, so if it's more than 25, uh, the balloon pressure, that means the, the, the balloon is larger or bigger than aorta. So we can aspirate uh, some of the uh, helium from the balloon to decrease its size. For example, we can uh, reduce 50 cc to um, uh, 30 cc by withdrawing some of the helium. Uh, from the balloon itself, but we can't inflate if uh, 30 cc, for example, to make it uh, uh, 40 cc. We can decrease the size, but we can't increase the size. If the patient is tachycardic like that, so the seated chair of the balloon or the plateau pressure of the balloon pressure waveform 
will be very small and there is a frequent, more frequent balloon inflation. In this diagram, there is a picture of bradycardic patient, the balloon inflation of bradycardia. If we see, we'll find the plateau pressure or uh, the seat of the chair will be more longer, more prolonged inflation of the balloon. That's because there is timing for uh, diastole, more time for diastole in bradycardic patient. So we need to guess what this is resin. This is atrial fibrillation. This is a small peat. Uh, so small, uh, very small rabbit uh, bead. Here, the the bead take long time. This is from atrial fibrillation. This is different uh, waveform of the balloon, not the same side. So this that means the patient has atrial fibrillation. Now, here we find intraortic balloon pump. There is no inflation on the uh, pressure waveform, and oh, it's very straight line or baseline of the balloon. That means the catheter is not con connected or there is improper trigger. And this is called page failure. Another form of page failure is a uh, uh, presence of a tri a trial or uh, to inflate, uh, but there is a, a fail to inflate or augment the arterial waveform and the tank is empty or there is low helium. In this uh, uh, diagram, we will find that this is a baseline. Here is there is the baseline is elevated, so that means uh, the the caster is kinked uh, uh, or a partial wrapped balloon or enteric balloon is in cheese uh, or enteric balloon is too low in aorta or in too large or overfilled. Yeah, the 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 helium is trapped inside the balloon. Uh, due to different causes like kinking, partial wrap, uh, wrapping of the balloon, the balloon inside the cheese, all of these will cause the baseline is elevated. Here the there is the baseline will be uh, here the baseline is below the baseline, so that means there is helium loss. And if there is helium loss, we should check for blood and caster tubing. Uh, or possible leak in the in connection or in tubing itself, so we should fix. Uh, this is the normal shape of the balloon, but here we will find rounded upper tip. So that's mean high pressure, and this is mean clink in the caster or tubing. The balloon is too large for aorta. Balloon position too high or too low, so it's creating rounded tip without uh, plateau pressure and uh, inflation upstroke. For this curve, we will find that there is reduced augmentation, and in the balloon pump, uh, in the balloon waveform, we will find low plateau pressure. So here we will find that there is a volume setting is too low, or the balloon is small for uh, the patient, or the balloon is low in uh, in aorta, or the patient has low systemic vascular resistance. So the uh, blood pressure around the balloon is very low. So there is make it low plateau pressure or low setting pressure. Wide inflation or deflation artifact. If we see here, we will find that there is no augmented pressure. There is wide inflation or deflation of the balloon. The wide variation in deflation and inflation of the balloon. This mean uh, of the problem is in proximal portion of interaortic balloon present in the sheath. Suture are too tight around the caster. There is partial obstruction. Partial kinking, uh, slow caster uh, or shuttle speed, uh, tortuous vessels, why deflation artifact may cause potential helium loss alarm if we used one to one assist interaortic balloon pump. If there is gas loss in the circuit, it's very important. If we notice that there is gas um, is loss in the circuit, there is blood in the circuit like that. If there is a blood observed, we should stop the pump immediately. Uh, prepare for removing of uh, the balloon. Um, uh, maybe need to shift the patient to the to lab. If blood uh, is not observed, verify the connection are tight. If appropriate, perform an auto filling and to press again, start to resume the pump. It's very important to deal with this uh, uh, troubleshooting in a proper way. We should thinking first if there is a, a pressure in the balloon, uh, if there is blood. If there is no blood and there is, we are not uh, suspecting rupture of the balloon, 
So we should check the, for the connection. If the connection are okay, we can perform autofill. This is a picture of a uh, console. And now we find uh, why we are, the, 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 there is a stop in the balloon. The balloon start not to inflate. There is no augmentation here. So what we should do, first we should put in our mind, there is something like calibration of the anti balloon pump. If this is a matter of a second, so we will watch and see if the balloon return back to work. This means uh, there is uh, just calibration of the balloon. If the patient, uh, if there is continuous, there is a problem in the balloon and we should check for troubleshooting. For this case, we need to adjust the balloon. The, if there is problem in the balloon augmentation, not, this is one-to-one -one in the aortic balloon pump, but there is no, uh, still there is a, a abnormal wave in one-to-one. -one. So we need to troubleshooting this one. We will go for one-to-two -two and see, we, here we can see there is uh, early inflation for the balloon, uh, early inflation. And the mode here is semi-auto, that means we can change uh, the position of uh, or the timing for uh, for the balloon inflation. Uh, so here, early inflation, we need to make it uh, a slightly delay to allow for uh, inflation or go for auto mode. And if there is no improvement in auto mode, we can check for the position of the balloon, uh, the size, and try to troubleshooting the balloon. This is a reference for this lecture, uh, which I depend on it uh, for this lecture. Thank you. You can put your comment and questions in, blue, uh, in the blue comments.